How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. <clears throat> my soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Let's bow our hands in prayer. <clears throat> Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we come in thy presence, O Lord, this blessed Sunday morning. Thanking and praising the Lord for this morning, O Lord, and thanking and praising the Lord for all the blessings that you've given us in our lives. Remembering, O Master, your goodness, your power, your uh, glory, Master, we come, we come to praise and worship you. And Lord, we pray that uh, we may be able to worship you in spirit and in truth, in and through Jesus Christ. Yes, Master, we commit ourselves in the hands, praying, O Lord, that you will pour your blessings upon us and uh, your presence may be in our midst, you may be seated upon our praises, Master. Towards this end, we commit ourselves, Lord, to thy almighty arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Let's continue worshipping the Lord by uh, turning in our songbooks at this time to song number 34. Song number 34, we'll rise to our feet and join in this beautiful hymn. Hymn number 34. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, my dear Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. from verses 24 to the end of the chapter. Verse 24, Psalms 104, verse 24 to the end of the chapter. And I'll read one part of the verse and you can respond with the other part. Verse 24, first part says, How many are your works, O Lord, in wisdom you made them all. Earth is full of your creatures. There is a sea vast and spacious, teeming with Creatures beyond number. Living things both large and small. Let the ships go to and fro. And maybe them which you form to frolic there. These all look to you. To give, give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles. Who touches the mountains and the smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him. As I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. 
Almighty and gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we continue to be in Thy presence, O Lord, worshipping You, praising You, glorifying Your name, Master. For Thou truly art a holy God, a God who is shrouded in absolute holiness. Yes, Master Lord, that's Your unchanging character, Master. And who can come in Thy presence, O Lord? Yes, Lord, you gave the Old Testament, you gave the instance in the Old Testament to show to us, Lord, that no one can come in thy presence. No one can do anything with your holiness, Master. Father, Lord, so many people died when they went against your holiness. And yet, Master Lord, you have opened the door for us to come into thy presence at any time and to touch you with our prayers. And you have done that, Master Lord, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Even as his body was broken, O Lord, and his blood was shed, the curtain was torn into two, Master Lord, and the way was opened for us to come into the Holy of Holies, where you are seated upon the mercy seat, O Master. Yes, Father Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, for your goodness in our lives. Thank you and praise you that you have blessed us abundantly, Master Lord. Mighty spiritual blessings you have given us. Made us your sons and daughters of God. You have washed away our sins. You have redeemed us from the power of sin. Yes, Lord, if you would count your blessings, they would a thousand tongues would not be able to contain the praises of Master Lord that would come out of our on our lips, Master. Thank and praise Lord. Thank and praise you, Master, that you have been a good God to us at the existential level, Master. Taken care of all our needs. You've been our security, our strength. You've been our refuge, Master Lord. You have kept us safe, Lord. You provided our needs, Master Lord, food, shelter, clothing. For all these blessings of God, we just want to worship you, praise you, and glorify your holy name, Master. And Father Lord, we ask forgiveness of our sins at this time, or that we committed against you in thought, word, and deed. And Father Lord, we pray that you will help us in the power of your Spirit to walk in thy path, to live by the Spirit and to be in step with the Spirit, Master. Holy Spirit God, we pray that you will help us to listen to your sweet, still voice and to follow your voice, to obey you. Yes, Father Lord, we pray at this time, especially your Master for the world, even as we see the COVID numbers once again rising, especially in our country, in uh, several states. I just want to pray that, Lord, this may subside. This may not be another wave which is lethal, Lord, which takes lives. Yes, Lord, the world has suffered more than two years now, Master. Not that it has any excuse, God, but we ask for your mercy, O Master. You have said, if my people humble themselves and turn towards me, I will stretch out my hand and heal their land. Lord, we humble ourselves at thy throne of grace. We acknowledge our nothingness. We acknowledge, Lord, our brokenness, Master. We acknowledge that we are nothing, O Master. And Father, Lord, we ask for your grace and mercy. Lord, we pray that this virus may completely be abolished. Lord, the vaccination program, 
that is going on all over the world, especially in our country. Father, everyone may be vaccinated, first, second, booster dose. And Father, Lord, people may find safety in that. But ultimately, we know, Lord, that unless you keep us safe, nothing happens amongst us. Father, Lord, we want to uh, come at those places, a master, where there is war, especially remembering the Russia and the Ukraine war, 100 days of that war regard, so many cities of Ukraine have been completely demolished, so many people have been rendered homeless, so many people have died. Yes, Lord, there have been orphans, widows, widowers, yes, master, and yet the war continues. Father Lord, we just want to pray at this time for mercy. Pray, O oh Lord, that you will reach out to Master Lord to that country, small country of Ukraine, and, and Lord, stop this war, Master. Give understanding, O Lord, to the Russian President Father. Father Lord, other places where there are uh, national disasters or other issues of God, we pray that you, O oh Lord, will reach out to such people. We want to pray, Master Lord, for our land. Father Lord, especially the violence that we see being perpetrated, O God, against the minorities. Pray, Lord, that you will reach out, O God, to our country and give it uh, sanity. Even as people are becoming more and more polarized, Lord, day by day, being divided on so many issues, especially religion and caste and so many other things, O God. We just want to pray that sanity may prevail, o Lord, on our country and the fundamental structure, O Lord, of our country of secularism may be kept intact. All the people in this country, O God, may feel safe, may feel, O Master, may know that this is their country where they have all the rights that are there in the Constitution, Master. That none of the fundamental uh, rights of people, O God, be taken away. Father Lord, we has come at our country in the hands. We pray, Master, that you will give grace to the ruling party, his Father Lord, the Prime Minister, his colleagues, that they, O Lord, may, may do what is right in thy sight. Give grace, Lord, to the opposition leaders, to join together, Lord, and be a strong opposition master. Father Lord, we pray this time for the church as a whole that you will bless it. Father, we pray that it may stand as a mighty witness of what you are, who you are, what you have done, and our country may experience great blessings, O Lord, through the Church, irrespective of the denomination master. Yes, Father Lord, we pray for uh, every area, God, which uh, where missionaries are working, church planting is happening, that you may bless all of them, Master. And where must, Lord, your word is not gone, be it in a particular area, be it among an uh, ethnic group, be it among a caste group. Lord, we pray that you will uh, send out your people, Master. Send out more laborers, God. All the mission agencies, Master, Lord, that they may be able to rise up, O Lord, to go and give your word to the 130 crore people, O Lord, of our country. Father, Lord, we as a small church stand, O Lord, for this very cause. Father, the training school that we run, we pray that you may bless it, O Lord. The spiritual mapping of the city, bless it, Master. Provide all our needs, O God, we pray. And let this continue even next year. We may have more students. We may be able to train more people to go and plant more churches. We pray, Lord, for the English service here that you may continue to bless it, O God. We are small in number, but we look to you to uh, uh, use it, O Master, Lord, to bring many people to the throne of grace. Yes, Father, we Commit ourselves small as we are into thy almighty arms. Ask your blessings upon each one who is connected with this church, whether they're here or not here. Bless them, O God, we pray. Yes, Father Lord, we uh, commit ourselves once again in the hands of Father. We ask this all in the most precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, this is the time that the Word of God is going to read me will be read to us. So the first reading, uh, Shama will read these verses for us. Genesis chapter uh, 11, verses 1 to 9. Genesis 11, 1 to 9. And then uh, Mona can read verses, uh, sorry, uh, Acts 2, 1 to 21. The first reading is uh, Genesis 11, 
1 to 9 and the second reading is Acts 2, 1 to 21. Genesis chapter 11, 1 to 9, the Tower of Babel. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As, we, as people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinir and settled there. They said to each other, come let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come let's build ourselves a city and, uh, with a tar that reaches the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves, otherwise we'll be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were making, were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they, begun, they have begun to do this, then nothing will, they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they would not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there from all, all over the earth and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because the, there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of Allah. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4. 21, sorry. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of the violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were si sitting. They saw what happened to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each, of each one heard them speaking in his own language, utterly amazed. They asked, are not these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us heart hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Syria. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and the converts of Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They have had too much wine. Peter addressed the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the leaven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and, with, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God. Right, this is the time that we uh, spend in praising and worshipping the Lord. We have our praise and worship sheets with us and we will continue to praise and worship the Lord. <laughs> the 
the first song says all heavens declare the glory of the risen lord who can compare to the beauty of the risen lord <clears throat> even as we go out every day or even as we get up in the morning every day we see the sky we see how god has made everything so wonderfully so even just keeping that in mind we can just sing the song and praise and worship the name of the lord Second verse, it says that from the beginning his plan was there to save his people, and but still no one could understand that there were so many instances. There are so many instances in the Bible, in the Old Testament also, but still no one could understand that Jesus he came on the cross and how frail he had become there on the cross, but still he saved us by dying there and raising up again. So let us sing this song and. Worship the name of the Lord. Love and through the wrath, the 
first Sunday of the month, we take the communion. And the reason for that is to remember the cross, remember what he has done for us. So even as we take the communion today, let us just thank the Lord and say thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price that you paid, bearing all my sin and shame. In love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for the
we're going to read from the Gospels at this time. The Gospel reading has been taken from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, and from verses 8 to 17 first, and verses 25 to 27. John 14, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 8 to 17. Verse 8 says, Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been among you still a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you are, are not just my own. Rather, it is the Father living in me. Uh, the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but at least believe me on the evidence of the miracles themselves. I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you uh, love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Similarly, verses 25-27 of the same chapter and it says... All this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things, will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. May the Lord his blessings to reading and hearing of his holy word. Very warm welcome, my dear friends, to this worship service. We continue having our worship service next Sunday also. At the same time, that is at 9 in the morning, and each one of us is invited for the same. Uh, please keep our Bible school in your prayer. The second session should be over uh, uh, this week, and they'll be having the exams for the second session from next Monday onwards, that is from 13th onwards, and then from 20th, of the month, the third session we start. Right? These are two month sessions that we are having. So the we would be completing about four months by the time this uh, session is complete. And then uh, the third session will start from the 20th of June. Uh, another two months and the last session will be another two months. So we go up to the end of November. And we praise God that uh, this time we had uh, 14 students at the beginning. And, and uh, we always had this problem of, uh, drop, of dropouts, people dropping out in between in the first two uh, times that we uh, conducted this particular program. But uh, this time, there has just been one dropout. So out of the 14, 13 are still there with us. And uh, they are doing their course pretty well. Though they, uh, do, they do find it difficult because many of them, or most of them, nearly all of them are... Uh, haven't completed the schooling. We have got people who are fifth stand pass, people who are rickshaw drivers, people who, uh, there's one uh, boy who was uh, selling uh, tea on the roadside. You know, he had this uh, tea stall on the roadside. His father has a rickshaw. And uh, we are people of that kind, all right? And uh, some of them, of course, find it uh, really difficult, but uh, some of them, to our surprise, uh, education is not hindered you know, the Word of God going to them and they are understanding the Word of God. And we teach them what is taught in Bible colleges, right, uh, at uh, at least a BTS level, that is the basic level in a Bible college, we teach them that course. You know, so uh, not easy, but we try our best to see that uh, they really are built up to go and give the Word of God outside. Right, so please do keep us in your prayers. Uh, we praise God for the funding that we have received, but we require more funding uh, 
Please keep the students in your prayers. Please keep the teachers in your prayers. All right, and all the people who are, in, uh, who are involved in the administration. We have got a, a kitchen going on there, full-time kitchen, who takes care, which takes care of the food for all the students there. Some of them are day scholars, but they have their afternoon food there. Some of them are staying there, so they have all the three meals there. All right, so please keep that in your prayer. Next year, of course, we would like to continue uh, this particular program, but we do not have any funding for the same. Right? This time we did get some funding, but next year that funding will not be there. But we do want to continue and we want to see that at least the next three or four years we are able to train uh, at least 10 to 15 students every year. Because we believe, I believe very firmly, that is the only way that we can really give the word of God. Right? Go to places where people do not know God's word, give them the word, plant churches there. And we are trying to train people for that. So please keep this in your prayers. All right, so even as we continue worshipping the Lord, let's turn at this time to the Apostles' Creed that is given in our communion sheets. All right, let's rise to our feet. And join in the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> right, so the, those, anyone wants any more sheets? They're very much here. Right. Okay. Uh, the Apostles' Creed, let us unite in the historic confession of the Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let's turn in our hymnals at this time to one uh, hymn, even as we bring our offerings unto the Lord, hymn number 411, hymn number 411. And today being the day of Pentecost, I've chosen hymns uh, which uh, sing glory to the Holy Spirit God. Breathe on me, breath of God, 411. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. We'll bring our offerings unto the Lord at this time. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love.
Father, we thank you and praise the Lord for all good blessings that you've given us in our life, Master, the till that we brought to you. From all that you've given us, we pray that you may bless it, O Lord, and use it for the extension of your kingdom. Multiply it, Master, and many people may be benefited, Father. We pray, Master Lord, for your word. Your word may come alive to us. We may grow in your word, Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We celebrate this day, dear friends, as the day of Pentecost, uh, the day that the Holy Spirit came to live with us human beings. In the Old Testament, we have the Holy Spirit coming at times for a particular work, but uh, in the New Testament, from Pentecost day onwards, the Holy Spirit has come to live with us and He will live with us till the end of the age. That's what Jesus Christ promised. And that is what happened on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Right? 40 days Jesus stayed upon the earth, and after another 10 days, uh, the apostles, the disciples, 125 people, they were there in the upper room, uh, praying for, the, for those 10 days, and there the Holy Spirit came upon them in great power. Uh, now this is uh, absolutely amazing, because if you see in the Old Testament, uh, man was not allowed to go in the presence of God because of God's holiness. Man could not approach God. You know, even the high priest could approach God uh, in the Holy of Holies. That's in the tabernacle, also in the temple. Uh, only once in a year there was a curtain that separated the Holy from the Holy of Holies. And uh, no one was allowed to go into that place because of the holiness of God and the sinfulness of a man. Now that same God now has come to live here in us and with us. And the reason, my dear friends, is very obvious it is because of what Jesus Christ has done for us on the cross, because of which God has now accepted us as his sons and daughters. Right? Even as we prayed, thanking the Lord that the curtain was torn into two. Right? On that very day when Jesus Christ uh, was crucified, his body was broken, his blood was shed. One of the things that happened was the curtain Right, and it's a, it was a very, very thick curtain, that which could not even be cut uh, with uh, scissors. That's the kind of curtain that was there. And uh, uh, that was torn into two, you know, by the power of God, thereby indicating the access that we have got into God's presence. We can now go into God's presence at any time. And uh, the proof of this is that God now comes and live, lives with us, in us. You know, and uh, uh, in fact, in two places in the New Testament, Paul uh, calls him our engagement ring. Right? Uh, or he says he's, he's a guarantee of things to come and he is uh, a seal of God's approval. God has put his approval on us by putting uh, or giving us the seal of the Holy Spirit. So God's approval is then on us, my dear friends, because Jesus has taken away our sin and redeemed us from the power of sin. That's one way to look at uh, Pentecost. Another thing is, what do we see happening on the day of Pentecost? When, uh, uh, you know, when the Holy Spirit came upon people, uh, the apostles, the disciples, and many others were there in the upper room. What did they start doing? Speaking different languages, you know, speaking in tongues, it says, but it is speaking in different languages and everyone could understand each other. There were people who were speaking, in, uh, you know, the apostles were speaking in languages they did not know and that is why the people were also surprised. Are these not Galileans? Because Galileans were not educated people. Right? Some of the villages, if you go, you will find people are not educated. So many times when you want to take a metaphor, it says, don't you belong to this village? Yes, uneducated people, illiterate people, people who are uh, doing hands-on work, fishermen are the kind. Are they not Galileans? How is it that they are speaking something? Some said that they are drunk and, uh, and the other said, no, it is not possible. This, uh, it is, this is the time in the morning. You know, not that people don't drink in the morning, but <laughs> uh, probably that, that system was there. Uh, people usually drink at night. Right? So they said that... Uh, 
uh, it's just in the morning, they are not drunk. You see, it's something else that's happening. And Peter there stands up, my dear friends, and he's able to explain what is happening. I want you to see this incident in light of Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. Right? Uh, how do you connect both these incidents? Why did we read Genesis 11, 1 to 9 on the day of Pentecost? Probably if I were to ask you that question. It's about the Tower of Babel, right? And what did God do at that time? He scattered people. How? By confusing the language. They confused the language because he said, if these sinful people, if they have one language, they can do, if they are able to do, you know, try to build this tower, you see, they can do anything. Meaning to say that they will join hands to do evil. If that was God was saying. You see, they will join hands and because of the unity they have of language, they will do more evil things. And that's why God gave, God uh, confused the languages and he scattered them. Hmm? They started maybe, there was, a, there was a noise, that's what the meaning of Babel. Huh? Uh, there was noise there and people were scattered. Why did we read that on the day of Pentecost? What is that? Okay, okay, you're the right track. Anything more? On the day of Pentecost, God, uh, uh, everyone was speaking different languages, but others could understand. There was no confusion. Okay, all right. So he, there, there was confusion. People were scattered. Here, God used the same thing. Language is my dear friends, but He gave. Uh, uh, the gift of tongues so that everyone could understand each other and thereby they were united. And that's how the church was formed. That's where the first church was formed. It's a 3,000 people, 5,000 people, you know, joined the church. So God is bringing about a unity by uh, making people understand each other. You see, that's what we were saying last time also. The whole concept of unity. You see, God was bringing about unity. So, uh, this is what God did on the day of Pentecost. And if, uh, we also read Psalm 104, where it says that the Spirit is the one who gives life. And that's exactly what the Spirit did on the day of Pentecost. Uh, he is the one who gave spiritual life to people on that day when He came upon them. You know, and thereby the church was formed. Now, what is the work, my dear friends, that the Spirit does in us? First and foremost, uh, it is given, John gives, that he is the one who convicts us of sin, righteousness and judgment. And once we accept our sinfulness, that's the first step, accepting our sinfulness, all right, and believe that Jesus has died for our sins and accept him as our Savior and Lord. People get stuck at the very first uh, stage. And then we say sinfulness. People say, what is sin? And we then want to define sin. They say, no, no, this is not sin for us. So they get stuck there. That's how Satan, my dear friends, keeps them away from being convicted. Hmm? People define their own sin. For us, uh, the culture does not define sin. It is the Bible that defines sin. What the Bible says is sinful, is sinful. What the Bible does not talk about, my dear friends, is not sinful. Okay, for people, it is their own convenience, it may be their culture, it may be uh, where they are living, my dear friends, that defines sin. For us it is not that. So, people get stuck, my dear friends, at that very first stage, but the Holy Spirit is the one who uh, convicts people of sin, righteousness and judgment. And uh, when we accept that, He is the one who regenerates us. He comes into us and He gives us what is called a new birth. Hmm? We know of... Uh, uh, the conversation that uh, Nicodemus had with Jesus, we'll talk about it again later also, but we know that he was a very devout Jew. He was a Pharisee. And a man, was he a good man or was he not a good man? Like the Pharisees. Jesus always had problems with Pharisees, right? So, uh, Nicodemus, how do, how do you place him? He's a good man. Alright, he was a good man. Okay. And later on we see 
that he is the one who speaks up for Jesus Christ, he is the one who comes and takes the body along with Joseph of Arimathea. So he was the one who followed the law. And yet what did Jesus tell him? You need to be born again. You need to be born again. All right. Without being born of the Spirit, Jesus said it is impossible for you to see the kingdom of God. By following your system of works, salvation by works, it is not possible for anyone to see the kingdom of God. It is only by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit has to regenerate you. And after this, my dear friends, the Holy Spirit starts His work in our lives. And that's an ongoing process. You see, it's a continuous process that happens in our life. And this, uh, what is the work that the Holy Spirit does in us, given in various passages in the New Testament. But we are just going to look at uh, uh, what we read in John chapter uh, 14. But before that, let's see how this conversation starts. Here is uh, Philip, you know, who uh, uh, puts a question to Jesus Christ in verse 8. He says, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And what does Jesus Christ tell him? He says, why do you ask this, Philip? Uh, don't you believe that uh, uh, when you see me, you see the Father? And the reason, he says, is the Father lives in me and I do his work. And if you don't believe me for the sake of the words that I speak, at least believe me for the sake of the miracles that I do. The evidence is very clear. The miracles I do is because the Father lives in me. Right? And this, I have been uh, saying this for the past three or four weeks, all about the Trinity, that is this mystical union, my dear friends, between the Father and the Son in the power of the Spirit. There are three people, three persons, I would say, and yet the oneness is because of this mystical union. And this mystical union comes about because of the obedience of the Father, of the Son to the Father. Complete obedience. Obedience of the Spirit to, uh, to Jesus Christ. They come to do not their will, but they live, my dear friends, to do the will of each other. That is what makes them one. And it is because of this oneness, my dear friends, that uh, Jesus says that I depict what the words of the Father. It is the Father living in me who is doing His work. Now, after saying this, uh, giving an answer, my dear friends, to, uh, uh, to Philip, we see the Lord changing track, you know, and uh, he starts saying that you also can do what I am doing. That's what he says to the disciples. You also can do what I am doing. Okay, and then he goes and says, ask anything in my name and you will see it happening. How is that possible? The same logic, my dear friends. The father lives in the son and he's doing his work. Right? The same way, Jesus Christ, uh, if you see in verse 16, he says, I'm going to send the Spirit now. Hmm? I will ask the Father and he'll give you another counselor. He says, I'm going to send you the Spirit and he's going to live in you. Just as the Father lives in me and he's doing his work, the, ev my, the evidence of the miracles shows that the Father lives in me, so also... When the Spirit comes and He lives in you, you know, uh, he, you will be able to do everything that I am doing now. Are you getting the logic of what Jesus Christ was saying? Hmm? Just as the Father lives in me and I do, the Father does the work in me, the Spirit will come and live in you and He will do uh, His work in and through you. And that is where you will be able to do all that I am doing. But what is the, uh, uh, what is, I would say, the key here of the Spirit working in us? The key, my dear friends, again is obedience. Just as the Son is obedient to the Father, even as we are obedient to the Spirit, my dear friends, the Spirit does His work in us. And that is why Paul, if you see in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verses 18 and verse 25, he, uh, three times he speaks about live in the Spirit, keep in step with the Spirit, right? walk with the Spirit. Three times he says that. Okay? You want to see those verses? It's an uh, important verse, Galatians chapter 5.
Galatians 5 and someone can read verse 18 and someone else can read verse 25. Okay, if you are led by the Spirit, okay, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 25. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Okay, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now what does, what do these wor words mean or what do these verses mean? Being led by the Spirit, living in the Spirit, being uh, in step with the Spirit. It simply means, my dear friends, obedience to the Spirit, listening to the Spirit, see what the Spirit is telling us and obey the Spirit. And how does that happen? It happens, my dear friends, when we read the Word of God and the Word of God is interpreted to us and we follow the Word of God. It's as simple as that. And when that happens, what Jesus Christ promised happens in and through us. God can use us, my dear friends, even as he used his son Jesus Christ when he came upon the earth to show his glory, the Father's glory was shown to Jesus Christ. We also can show that glory, you know, to the world if we live in obedience to the Father's will. All right, so that, that's an important thing that we need to keep in mind. Uh, the Holy Spirit can work uh, only uh, in the space that we give the Holy Spirit. All right? Holy Spirit can work if you give him space by living a life of obedience. Giving space, I hope all of us understand this. Giving space. Husband and wives, you uh, give space to your spouses. Do you give space to your spouses? Right? Their freedom is uh, you know, to the extent that you give them space. They can work to the extent that you give them space. Right. Both ways. Okay. Similarly here also, uh, the extent that we give space to the Holy Spirit by being obedient, being obedient to Him, that's the extent that He works in us. That's the extent that we can show the glory of God in our lives. Now, what is the work that the Holy Spirit does in us apart from regenerating us? There are four things that are given here in these passages. Number one, He says, Counselor. He'll be a counselor. Number two, it says that uh, he'll be with you forever, the spirit of truth. So he's the spirit of truth. Thirdly, you see verse uh, 26. It says, uh, But the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I've said. That means he'll be our teacher, our interpreter. And the fourth thing is given in verse uh, 27, where Jesus Christ says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. He'll be our comforter. Okay, these four things please keep in mind. I try to make it as simple as possible. He'll be our counselor, he'll be the spirit of truth, he'll be our teacher or interpreter, he'll be our comfort. What does it mean to be our counselor? In Isaiah chapter 9, uh, where, which is a prophecy of the coming Messiah. The picture of the coming Messiah is given in Isaiah chapter 9. And one of the titles that is given to uh, the Messiah is... Wonderful Counselor, Wonderful Counselor, Isaiah chapter 9, I don't remember the verse there. And uh, did Jesus fulfill this uh, title of being a counselor? Yes, if we just see the conversations that Jesus Christ had with uh, different people at different times, we can see how wonderful he, is, he was as a counselor. Think of that uh, conversation that he had in, in John chapter 4 with the Samaritan woman. Right? So here is a... A uh, lady who is living an immoral life, she had five husbands and now she's living with a man who is not a husband, a living in a relationship, shunned by the society. Huh? Was she shunned by the society? How do we know that? She came in the afternoon. She came in the afternoon. Okay, and yeah, here is Jesus breaking all norms and starting a conversation. Jews do not have, uh, you know, first of all, a conversation with uh, non-Jews, especially Samaritans. That's number one. Uh, Jewish men didn't talk to women in public. Jesus broke all those norms, first and foremost. And then he went on to reveal what was going on in her life, the immoral life that she was living. But Jesus did not stop there. After showing her that I know you're living an immoral life, 
he does not even condemn her what does he do he goes on my dear friends to reveal why she is doing this what is the problem what is it that she really wants right and uh, and thereby after pointing out that he gives the solution of, of her problem not this not the symptoms not the sign he does not treat the sign you know the way she was living was just a sign of the deeper problem that she had though she was living in a moral life i believe my dear friends her problem was she was she was trying to find true love somewhere and jesus christ said that uh, i'll give you living waters waters that will flow forever and thereby uh, you know we see that he counseled her what a wonderful way to counsel and uh, what did she become she became a mighty witness for the lord okay think about the conversation that we uh, talked about uh, nicodemus uh, the wonderful counsel that uh, uh, jesus christ gave nicodemus when nicodemus came he started beating around the bush we know who you are and by the evidence of uh, your works and jesus christ uh, uh, points out to him very clearly nicodemus stop beating around the bush unless you are born again you cannot enter the kingdom of god because he knew why nicodemus had come nicodemus did not have confidence on his own system of of uh, uh, salvation that he was following he knew that uh, uh, this system of uh, uh, works you know salvation by good works you see that of solid salvation by following the law that is not really going to work out and that's why he had come and jesus points it out that your system of works is not going to get you salvation you need to be born again you know so jesus reveals to him my dear friends you know that uh, he needs to get regenerated and they boy come in contact with the almighty and if you see this conversation just go home and read my dear friends john chapter 3 uh, uh, see how wonderfully jesus gives space even to nicodemus he is not jesus is not the only one who is speaking all the time he gives space to nicodemus for him to express himself that's the work of a counselor counselor listens my dear friends gives goes to the root of the problem and gives the solution what about the rich and ruler in mark chapter 10 here is a rich and ruler who comes to jesus christ saying uh, master what should i do to uh, gain eternal life and jesus goes on to tell him go and follow uh, you follow all the commandments and he says i followed all of them then what does jesus christ do he just hits the nail on the head he does not you know beat around the bush he says your problem uh, dear friend is that you love money more than you love god go and sell all you have and come and follow me counseling my dear friends doesn't mean that you uh, try to make a person happy that's not what counseling is all about counseling is going to the root of the problem telling the problem and giving a solution <coughs> maybe for the uh, women of the well it was different but here jesus christ is very very clear go and sell all you have wonderful counselor wonderful counselor and uh, uh, the holy spirit jesus christ says will be your counselor even as i have counseled he will be your counselor one that you can rely upon uh, in any situation there will be no situation my dear friends that we are alone or no situation in which we will we will have to throw in the towel understand this throw in the towel you know in a boxing ring one who uh, wants to give up you know he throws in the towel we don't we would never come to that situation because we have got a wonderful counselor there's a holy spirit and i'm sure that we have experienced this in our life and if you have not experienced that in your life any problem that you are facing at this moment go and present it to the holy spirit get the holy spirit this is my problem what should i do now don't uh, uh, preempt the answer okay that this is the answer i want because the holy spirit doesn't work in that way just go and tell the problem god this is my problem what should i do and you will see how wonderfully something comes out 
which you may like, may not like. That's not the issue here. But some solution comes out which you would have never even thought about. That's the Holy Spirit, you know, working in you, giving the giving uh, you counsel. He's a wonderful counselor. Secondly, he is called the Spirit of Truth. Now, when Jesus said, you know, that uh, uh, I am the truth, I am the way, the life, and the truth. Okay, uh, what what was the actually meaning? When I asked this question to Many people, they usually say that all that Jesus Christ said was truthful. He never spoke lies. Well, we always think of truth in existential terms. That is, the way we live this life upon this earth. The truth in a particular situation. Now, there is no doubt that this is important. But when Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, he was speaking about the truth of life. The truth of life. Where have we come from? What are we doing here? What are we supposed to do here? Where do we go from here? That truth. Okay? And uh, every religion, my dear friends, tries to answer these, these particular questions. It's Hinduism. What does Hinduism say about these questions? I would ask you. Alright, it says that you are going to be reincarnated according to your karma and until your karma really becomes zero you know uh, you will keep on getting reincarnated you will keep on coming back in some form or the other okay till uh, you become uh, uh, neti neti that is zero you become zero okay you attain samadhi and you become one with uh, uh, with uh, the ultimate ultimate consciousness okay that's uh, that's a true claim of uh, Hinduism. What does Islam say? Islam talks about heaven and hell. Yes. But what does it say? It says, follow the five pillars of uh, Islam. Five pillars of Islam. Okay. You follow that and you will get heaven. And what heaven is, again, uh, their own definition is there of what heaven is. Okay. Uh, what does Christianity say? Christianity says, that God is the one who has made us, he has sent this, uh, us upon this earth for a particular purpose, to take care of the earth. You know, that's, that's the main purpose, that he is there to glorify him, to be in relationship with him. And then we stand in judgment of heaven and hell. And that's what Jesus Christ showed. He said, I have come from heaven. Okay, he showed the kind of life we should live. He died, then he rose up and he's gone to heaven. He, in front of everyone, he went to heaven. He is now seated in heaven. And that is where Jesus Christ did not show the truth. He says, this is the truth. He didn't show that. He says, I am the truth. The way that I am going is the way that you can also go or come. Jesus has gone there before us and he, we, we just now have to follow him. That is the truth. Okay? Now, when Jesus Christ said that the Holy Spirit is the, uh, uh, is the spirit of truth, what is he meaning? He is the one who will lead us in this truth as compared to all the truth claims that are there going on in the world and which are different from each other, which are very, very distinct from each other. Okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit will lead you in the in the truth which is true the truth claim which is true i understand what i'm saying the truth claim that jesus christ showed in and through his life death resurrection ascension so easy my dear friends for us to be taken away from this truth claim so many christians today uh, believe in the whole aspect of pluralism. Hmm? Every religion is the same. It doesn't really matter what you follow. I was uh, reading one uh, survey that was taken by one agency and they say that 90% uh, of the pastors believe in the Great Commission. The Great Commission, go and make disciples of all nations. Okay. He says, uh, but only 25% of the 
congregations believe in the great commission that means 75% of the congregations the lay people they don't believe in the great commission meaning to say they don't believe that we should go and uh, make disciples of all nations and the reason is very obvious the reason is they have their religion we have ours let them follow their religion you know it will take them somewhere we it, our religion will take us somewhere we need not interfere in their way of life or their thinking and this is very true for many many christians today and the reason my dear friends the reason is satan has very cleverly subtly played on the hearts and minds of people very subtly that everything is okay everything is okay show me what is the difference between hinduism and christianity does hinduism tell anyone to uh, tell tell uh, or teach that you should murder someone does hinduism teach that you should uh, tell lies does islam teach that uh, 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 you should uh, do some evil things does it teach that christianity also, christianity also teaches the same things do not tell lies do not murder honor your father and mother these are the same everyone teaches the same things right this is what this is what people believe and as ravi zaka used to say that every religion is superficially the same but fundamentally different fundamentally different every religion is distinct no religion or no faith is the same as the other and the holy spirit is the spirit of truth and he leads us in the right truth claim let's go ahead the third thing is that he's going to be our teacher or interpreter that's what jesus said that he will teach all that i have taught so very important because the bible cannot be understood my dear friends by our own selves what did people do with the old testament interpretation of the old testament they messed it up just a single law jesus said or god had said that uh, keep the sabbath holy and they made rule after rule more than 200 rules my dear friends of of uh, what not to do on the sabbath how much they should walk what work they can do what work they cannot do whole list of things whole list of things it became a bible by itself what is called the mishnah hmm? the interpretation of of the old testament especially the first five books of bible left to our own my dear friends we cannot understand the word of god it is the holy spirit who has to come and interpret the word for us we do not require a godly interpreter we require god himself to be our interpreter please keep this in mind we don't require pastors my dear friends to come and interpret we require god himself and that's what god had promised in jeremiah chapter 31 he says i will place the law in your hearts and your minds this is the new covenant i'm making with you and that's exactly what he is doing in us we pastors my dear friends we can explain a few things but unless the holy spirit is there in you you cannot understand even what we are explaining hmm just keep that in mind all right so he is going to be our teacher and interpreter and the last thing is that he is going to be our comforter jesus christ said my peace i give with you my give to you not as the world gives you but a peace which passes all understanding this is a peace that holds that holds my dear friends us in all circumstances a peace that comforts us in all circumstances uh examples paul and silas in uh, acts chapter 16 they were flogged severely put in jail and here my dear friends they are singing praises unto the lord they had a peace that passes all understanding think of paul when paul was placed under house arrest his one hand was chained to the hand of the roman soldier that was there the person who came to uh, guard him he would have the other part of the uh, the chain on his wrist one would be on the wrist of uh, paul and if he had to stay for uh, all the time like that 
you can imagine the kind of frustration that you undergo. And yet, in those circumstances, do you know the uh, letter that he wrote? He wrote uh, letters where, when he was in jail. This was basically house arrest. You know which letter that he wrote? He wrote the letter to the Philippians. And uh, what is the key word in Philippians? One word, one word. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. The word joy and rejoice comes in virtually every second paragraph in the whole of the letter. Here is a man, my dear friends, who knows, he's not only jailed, but he also knows that he is going to be killed. He's going to be beheaded. This is the time that Nero has started throwing uh, Christians, my dear friends, to ravenous uh, lions. Hmm, you see some of the movies. Terrible. At that time, he says, yeah, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. A peace that passes all understanding. And this only the Holy Spirit can give us. Even as we walk with the Holy Spirit and live with the Holy Spirit, my dear friends, He is the one who can, who can give us this uh, peace. A peace which transcends all understanding. A peace which gives us joy in all circumstances. This is the work of the Spirit in our lives. He is a counsellor. He leads us in truth. He is a teacher. He is a comforter. And how thankful we should be, my dear friends, to the Lord for the ministry in our lives. Just to remember that uh, uh, the Spirit works according to the space that we give Him in our lives. As Paul said, let me remind you once again, walk in the Spirit, live by the Spirit, be in step with the Spirit. Let the Spirit control you. Obey the Spirit. Obey the Spirit. And that's where you'll see wonderful things happening in your life. Let's bow down in prayer. Father, we thank you, praise and worship you, Lord, for this, uh, for your word, for the time that you give us, for revealing to us, Lord, the work that the Holy Spirit is doing in our lives. And Lord, we pray that you will help us, Lord, to give space, Lord, to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what he's saying. Not try to do our own will, Master. Help us to be good listeners, God. Silence our heart, God, before you every day that you can speak to us in the power of your Spirit. Father, we just commit ourselves in thy almighty hands. Even as we parting in the communion, O oh Lord, we pray that you will be with us. Bless us, O oh Lord. And let the communion table come alive to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Even as you prepare for the communion, let's sing one hymn. At this time, hymn number 412. Hymn number 412. Holy Spirit, faithful guide, ever near the Christian side, gently lead us by the hand, pilgrims in a desert land. Beautiful song. We prepare ourselves to partake in the communion. Holy Spirit, faithful guide, ever near the creation side, gently lead us by the
Be that truly and earnestly repent of your sins and in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Let's pray together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn to thee. Have mercy upon us, pardon, deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Please be in prayer even as I offer the prayer of consecration. Almighty God and Heavenly Father who of thy tender mercy does give thine only son Jesus Christ who suffered death upon the cross for our redemption who made there by the one offering of himself a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his passion, death and resurrection, may be partakers of the divine nature through him who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and when given thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, eat, take eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. Likewise after supper he took the cup and when he, when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying, drink you all of this for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Let's pray the prayer of humble access together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to partake of the sacrament of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that we may walk in newness of life, may grow into his likeness, and may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Right, the table is open, my dear friends, for all who want to partake in the communion, in remembering our own sinfulness, remembering that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, has died for us, and giving thanks in our hearts to him. You can just rise up where you are, then I'll come and give the elements to you. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy soul and body and everlasting life. Take in this remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving.
The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is shed for thee, preserve thy soul and body and everlasting life. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee and be thankful. You have heard this morning about the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. We also heard that the Holy Spirit can work in our lives to the extent that we allow Him to work. We extend to the extent uh, to the extent that we are obedient to what He is trying to tell us. Make a commitment today that you will very consciously listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying and walk in His path. That God may use each one of us for his glory for the extension of his kingdom who in peace and with the peace of the lord be with us always amen when as we remain standing let's uh, turn to the concluding part which is the communion Which is the prayer of thanksgiving. It is also a prayer where we offer ourselves unto the Lord for His service. So apt today, after hearing what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. Let's pray together. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thy humble servants desire thy fatherly goodness. Mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, in the faith in his blood, we and thy whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of the Holy Communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this abundant duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.